All right, greetings. Continuing the issue series, we're in the last chapter of 1 Corinthians, and this is chapter 16, and I'm entitling this um, vlog, Flush the Flesh. Here in 1 Corinthians 16, it's really just some final instructions, some final exhortations. It's not a lot of meat here, but there are some still some important things that Paul addresses, because, you know, anytime you use... You know, your beginning is very important. To get somebody to listen is usually what you say first, That whether they're tune in or tune out. But also your final statements are what leave a lasting impression. So our, last, our final statements are very important. So these are Paul's final statements in his letter to the Corinthians. First of all, he deals with taking collections. He wants to take a collection for the needs in Jerusalem. First of all, he said to do this on the first day of the week. So we see they were gathering on Sundays. Most likely because of the resurrection happened on, what most believe, on a Sunday. What day do we gather? We should gather as often as we can. We see in the book of Acts that they gathered daily. But regarding taking a collection, it was the first day of the week. And Paul also told them to don't wait till he gets there to take this huge collection. Do it week by week. Let it build. People can only do so much. So we can't expect to put too much on people. So give what you can and do it in phases. So we learn about taking collections here in 1 Corinthians 16 in the first part. In the second part, it talked about Paul's travel plans. Here he said he was going to hopefully come to Corinth and stay during the winter. He didn't want to risk himself. And we should be cautious as well. Sometimes we don't, we're not always cautious. Now God in his will is the safest place we can be. But we got to make sure we're in his will. And God has given us wisdom. So when we're making our plans, we got to think things through. Like weather and these situations and where we should go when. And the only time we go against what is just having reasoning is when God really makes it clear that he is going to take care of us even though it's dangerous. So we can make our plans, but God's going to order our steps. So it's okay to plan ahead, but at the same time, we got to be open to saying, okay, God, this is what seems to make sense, but when it comes down to it, I want you to be the one directing my steps because your ways are not always my ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. He is bigger than, and what he sees, he knows beyond what we know. So we got to be always acknowledging him in every situation. And we're not always get to do what we want with God. So we can't just go by doing what we want, what we prefer. God will often put us in places and times that are not, that are uncomfortable because what we grow through it. So Paul was also looking at the times and the seasons and he saw some great opportunities some affected doors because of Pentecost and where he was going to be and the amount of people that were going to be there. So we also got to look at that and seize the moment. Look for doors. Look for times. Our eyes got to be open. You know, situations such as World events as the um, Olympics coming up this year in 2020. These are great opportunities. There's massive people from all over the world together to bring the gospel, to see people come to the Lord. So when it comes to our travels and our planning, we got to involve God. But sometimes we don't always hear clearly and we make our plans. And yet in the end, God says, okay, I had a plan for this year and God suddenly changed it. And it's hard for some people to swallow sometimes, but we got to, our allegiance is to God above all else, even if we have to disappoint people. All right? Because people are like, well, didn't you make that plan? I did, but God intervened and ordered my steps differently. And the last part in 1 Corinthians 16 was some final exhortations. Paul was reminding the church of some of the things he had kind of shared throughout Corinthians. He said, be alert. Why do we got to be alert? Because Satan's like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. 
We've got to be alert. He is trying to take us out. So we've got to be always alert. It also said, stand firm in the faith. Remember Ephesians 6.10 says, stand firm in the faith. Put on the full armor of God. It says, be courageous. God told Joshua through Moses, you know, not to be afraid, but to be courageous. And also be strong. That also in Ephesians 6.10, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. But the most important is the last statement there in that chapter where it says, your action must be done in love. 1 Corinthians 13 is the ultimate chapter in Corinthians. If that was the only chapter in it, it's the chapter we need. It's the most important chapter because God is love. And if we want to reflect God, we do it with love and if anything we do doesn't come out of love it is as nothing so these were some important things that paul left but one thing i just wanted to share regarding corinth corinth they were really known as fleshy christians carnal christians you ever have a child i think we all have had anyone who has children and our children is stinking especially when they're young we know that they need to go to the bathroom so we say hit the bathroom when we see other Christians that are being carnal, we need to tell them, hit the prayer room. It's okay. Don't worry about offending them. Because when we're stinky, we don't reflect God. God's aroma is amazing. You know, I try to buy the best cologne. I like good cologne. I like to smell good. God smells good. And when we're in his presence, we smell good. So we should expect not to be stinking. But we're all human, and at times, we get fleshy. And we need people in our life that are willing to say, Hey, you're not in the Spirit. The character going on, the attitude that you have is not of God. You need to get in the prayer room. Romans chapter 8 tells us that the Spirit puts the flesh asunder, puts it down. It flushes it. The Spirit flushes the flesh. So if we're going to be right with God and deal with people in love, our flesh must be flushed and needs to be flushed daily. That's why we need to feed our spirit. You know, we are what we eat. What are we feeding ourselves? We need to feed our spirit. If we feed our flesh more than we feed our spirit, our flesh will lead us. What we feed leads. <laughs> so if we're going to be led by the spirit, we got to feed the spirit. We got to Fill ourselves up with Holy Spirit every day so that the Spirit leads us and we're not stinking. Stinking thinking and stinking attitudes. We want to smell good. We don't want to be like the Corinthian church, carnal. We want to be spiritual. We want to be in, in we want to be seen in the image of God. Like John 4:24 says, God, those who worship God worship him in spirit and in truth. So as we feed, how do we feed our spirit? How do we become spirit-led? We feed their spirit truth. The truth and, and the spirit go hand in hand. And then we're living a lifestyle of worship. We take God's presence wherever we go. When we enter in a room, we bring his aroma. It smells good. We don't stink. All right, I hope this um, devotion has blessed you today. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.